So normally on Sundays, I don't do work on millennials with money or any work for that matter. Sunday is kind of a day that I've decided that I set aside to chill, to rest, you know, just take some time to myself and enjoy, do whatever I want to do. But this Sunday that just gone was a bit different. To enjoy said free time, I'd gone through the Netflix catalog and I'd built up a list of stuff to watch for when I take some downtime, when I'm chilling out, when I'm eating a meal, whatever, you know, just to disconnect. And as I was going through the list, I found a documentary called The Minimalists. Now, I really liked the name, liked the trailer, decided to add it to my list, you know, watch it, chill out, learn something new. And before I knew it, I'm sat down taking notes and coming up with a video idea. Because what I saw actually impacted me quite profoundly. I really liked what I saw and I want to talk a bit about it in a video with you guys. So let's get into it. What's up guys, my name is Johnny. Welcome to Millennials with Money. I upload content to YouTube on Wednesdays and Sundays, giving you tips on how to take control of your money today to create a bright financial future tomorrow. If you like what you see on the channel, then why not hit the like button, click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and become part of the ever-growing Millennials with Money community. Okay, try and do this with as few spoilers as possible. <laughs> so The Minimalists is a documentary on Netflix, which is about 53 minutes long. Uh, so it's a nice watch, you know, you can sit down, have a meal, just chill out, put it on for an hour. It's pretty easy to stay concentrated the whole time. You don't have to watch it in multiple sittings, all that stuff. It's essentially built around the lives of Ryan Nicodemus and Josh Fields Milburn, who are the two founders of the Minimalist blog, which has now become a movement and a way of life for many people worldwide. You've also got some guest appearances in there. You've got people who have joined the movement talking about how their lives have benefited from it. You've got the executive director of Greenpeace and you've got Big Dave Ramsey in there as well. Had to give Big Dave Ramsey a shout out when he featured. So before watching this documentary, I had heard of the minimalist movement um, and I thought that minimalism, you know, was just um, buy as little as possible, have as few things as possible, you know, do things on the cheap. Um, have a nice boring empty house you know what I'm saying all that kind of stuff um, and my understanding of my assumption was wrong which is what I learned throughout this documentary and I'm gonna tell you why my understanding was wrong just a bit later on as I go through and based on my prior incomplete understanding of minimalism I wouldn't have considered myself a minimalist before watching this documentary no yes I would buy stuff and I would nine times out of ten I'd have a good reason for buying something but what I found is that uh, I still accumulated a lot of stuff and I would still buy stuff that if I really did a lot of soul searching and asked, I wouldn't necessarily need it. And as I thought about that again, about my accumulation of stuff, when I think back to the fact that I've moved countries three times over the past three years, so between France, the UK and Spain, when I think about all the stuff that I didn't want to part with, it definitely kind of backs up the point that I wouldn't have considered myself a minimalist. Then I turned on this documentary and I started learning some new things. So first of all, this documentary, it's a US documentary. You can tell by the way they talk about the American dream and the way they present consumerism. This is a very US focused documentary. Nevertheless, a lot of what is talked about and a lot of what is said in the documentary is still very applicable to us who are watching and living in Europe. The UK, definitely, it can be applied there. Even where I'm living now, Spain, it can be applied. I'm seeing a lot of kind of consumer marketing, aggressive kind of marketing to try and get you to spend money to try and buy stuff. So definitely applicable in a European context as well. And throughout this documentary, there's a lot of interesting facts, figures and statistics presented, ranging from um, debt, ranging from uh, corporate profit in the retail sector, all that kind of stuff. And it also talks about the journey on how we got here from marketing techniques used by retail corporations to the digital transformation and how that is facilitating um, targeted ads and you know a push for consumerism and buying stuff you don't need. And as all these stats, these ideas, these theories are being presented, it's talking you through the lives of Josh and Ryan, uh, the two founders of that movement. And for them, starting that minimalist movement, they talk about how it came down to really deep questions such as how do they define their self-worth? How do they determine their success? What do they really need to be happy in life? And so the conclusion that they draw is that by having less stuff, you are happier. But it's not just less stuff. There is part that I missed there and that is having less stuff that adds value to your life, which makes you happier. 
So what I really learned from that is that minimalism doesn't start with having as little stuff as possible or getting rid of all the stuff you don't need. It starts with asking yourself those questions of how can I be happy in life? What do I need to make me happy? How do I determine my success? How do I determine my self-worth? And then once you have been able to answer those questions, then you can start to think about minimalism. And minimalism is a product of what you believe, what you think on the inside about what makes you happy, what brings satisfaction and joy to your life. Once you can answer those deeper questions, once you understand and know what you want from life, you develop a certain immunity to this consumer culture that we're in and you're able to say no to stuff that's being pushed in your face and you can make decisions about what you really want, what you really need and what adds value to your life. So after watching this documentary and having learned the things that I've learned, how do I feel about minimalism now? Well, it's definitely something I want to give a try. I definitely want to try and reduce the clutter in my life, which is something they talk about as well. Maybe I won't become a full minimalist, so to speak, but I definitely want to reduce some of the clutter and gain some um, organization and declutter my life a bit. And even though I feel like I was already applying a lot of the ideas and principles that were talked about in the documentary to my own life, my reasoning behind it wasn't what it should be. My reasoning for doing so was to get the best net result when I did income minus expenses at the end of the month. But what I realized after watching this documentary is that, you know, having a good budget doesn't make me feel happy. Having more money at the end of the month because I did well with my finances doesn't make me happy. It's not what gives me joy in life. So first of all, I need to ask myself some of those deeper questions. How do I define my success? What do I really want out of life? What brings me joy in life? What brings value to my life? And next, I'm gonna try what is called the less is now challenge, which is something they raise at the end of the documentary, but it's also in the trailer, so it's not really a spoiler. Essentially, the less is now challenge runs over the course of a month and every day you need to get rid of so many items. So on day one, you get rid of one item you don't need, two, you get rid of two items, day three, three, etc., etc., And that goes on until the end of the month. And a lot of people in the documentary that were talking about doing it gave some really positive results and said that it really helped them and they got rid of even more stuff than they planned as a result because of the momentum they built up. So I'm going to give this challenge a try and I'm going to share it with you guys of course. I'm going to share my progress with you at the end of 30 days. So if you're not subscribed and you want to see that video when it comes out, make sure you've got notifications turned on so you don't miss a thing. So yeah guys, there you go. Um, overall, definitely a worthwhile watch for the documentary. I've really just scratched the surface and talked very high level on the key ideas that are presented here. Definitely recommend that you get on Netflix, um, have a watch of that documentary. Leave a comment as well if you've watched it. Let me know what the biggest takeaways, the biggest lessons were for you. And if you're already living a minimalistic lifestyle, why not leave a comment and let me know how minimalism has changed your life. That's all from today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you tell another millennial that this channel is where the good stuff goes down. Be sure to check out the Millennials with Money social media and internet pages and also the other videos on this channel. I'll see you on the next one and let's get this money.